Here is an oddity I found while raking through some old stuff. And I remember buying this. I can't remember if it was from Farnell in the UK or RS Components. One of the two, but certainly when I went to find information, it says ERG-GLL7 in the back. All I could find was a data sheet archived from Farnell. ERG fluorescent glow tube. And this powers direct from the mains as far as I can see. Um... And, uh, well, I'll show you the diagram afterwards, but its characteristics are the ignition voltage is about 195 volts, maintains 180 volts, lamp current 7.5 milliamps, and it has a claimed lifespan of 10,000 hours. And I believe these were sold for use in uh, panels for behind panel illumination. So tell you what, let's strip it and plug it in. Then I'll show you the schematic and how it works. Because the only ballast for this is that little resistor there, and it is a metal film resistor, so probably about um, half a watt. Let's see if I can get... Oh, the insulation is quite hard. It's old. So let's pop these off. Um, so the other two resistors, because there's one resistor up to each end of the tube, uh, they are 220k resistors. And they're only rated quarter watt because they're not passing a huge amount of current. Think small neon indicator. Right, tell you what. Here is the anti, which may be better suited to this task. This is where it would be quite useful to... Well, I'll see what happens. Slightly apprehensive about this because I... Ooh, I probably tried it at the time. But I've not had it lit since, and it feels like I'm about to power something up that could be destroyed instantly. So let's try this. I'm going to plug it in. If it is destroyed instantly, we open the tube and we find out what was inside. So I'll just shuffle this across here. It's got a very heavy cable. It's glowing at the end. It's starting to glow. Uh, it says 7 milliamps, which is within its rating. 1.6 watts. 0.9 power factor, which is ludicrously good power factor for this. Right, tell you what, let me just, uh, let me turn the light off and take the exposure off. And I'll let this warm up for a while. There's an orange glow at the end. That's quite odd. I wonder what gas is in this. But anyway, I shall pause momentarily and let it warm up and we'll see if it gets any brighter. One moment, please. OK, I've given it a good length of time. I've done some measurements and temperature measurements. The resistor, the little resistor, gets quite hot, but that's it's within its rating. Uh, 7 milliamps, 0.9 power factor, 1.7 watts. That's it's fairly stable. The two ends of the uh, tube also get quite warm, even though there aren't effectively filaments in them. Right, tell you what, watch your eyes. The light is coming back. Pow, the light is back. Let me unplug this before I unwittingly pick it up for that innocent little glowing thing which does operate at full mains voltage. It will not hold a charge, although it will be hot. Not too bad. The ends of the tube are notably quite warm, but it's not too bad. Right. So let me find a note I made here, and I'll show you the wiring of this and what it looks like inside, because I looked it up the end. Uh, and oddly... The both ends are effectively what they call tubulated. They've got a little tubulation in it, but this end is fully closed. Well, this end is open on the outside, but it must be closed on the inside. But this end is where they've uh, drawn the vacuum and then they've sealed it by just pressing and pressing it flat against the end. And there are two electrodes. Um, inside, we've got a disc electrode and then there's a ring electrode around it. And... What they effectively do is, whichever leg of the main supply that the disc is connected to, because it's the main electrode, the other leg has a 220k resistor going to the ring around it. So that basically means that between the disc and the ring, there's a the full sort of open circuit voltage, and that causes it to be, break down the, um, the cathode voltage. Because where you've got a cold cathode electrode like this, because it is effectively acting like a cold cathode, uh, where you've got that, you end up the significant voltage drop across it, and the combined voltage drop, if they just had two electrodes and the, uh, each end of the tube, then effectively the voltage across the tube might have been too high with the combined gas drop across that as well. So by using those electrodes, it's a bit like the mercury discharge streetlights.
They often had a little auxiliary electrode next to uh, and uh, the electrode at the other end just to basically break down that voltage, get it to glow there. And once it was glowing there, then it would kind of flash over to there. It will also probably help by the fact that tracks run on the circuit board in the vicinity of the tube for helping it strike across. So here is the uh, main current limiting element, an 8.2K resistor on a 240 volt supply. Um, and that is going straight up to that electrode at that end. The other connection is going to this electrode at this end, and then the two 220K resistors going to the other electrodes just to break down that initial voltage. And that's more or less it. There's not really much else to say. The temptation is to get an old fluorescent tube that has knackered electrodes at the end, or deliberately blow the electrode, the, the heaters at the end, and then just connect it with this crisscross resistor configuration. That uh, resistor configuration does have their version here. I'll zoom down this. In the data sheet, it shows that sort of crisscross, but in a sort of perhaps a, a simpler form with the current limiting resistor and then the uh, initial strike resistors. And it looks as though the tube itself may have originally had different length leads to indicate which was which. Um, and just for reference, here are the lamp characteristics, which uh, it looks a bit grainy because this is clearly a scanning. But there we have it. It's an odd thing. Obsolete now, but you know what? It's worth looking at these. It's worth actually uh, digging out stuff from the past and taking a look at it because you just never know what it's going to inspire in the future. But there we have it. The little back panel illuminating fluorescent tube that just powers directly from the mains with just resistors as the ballast. Very, very simple. Very neat. Quite a cute little thing.